Thank you. Uh, well, it's very nice to be here, and thank you all for turning out on a, a rainy uh, Friday night. Um, the, we formed Wealthy Nation because we uh, felt very strongly that the, uh, the decision on September the 18th uh, has to involve all the people of Scotland and all sections of Scottish society. Uh, we hope that after the sept September the 18th, uh, we will have a new nation, looking forward to a new future and a new destiny. Uh, and we are very strongly of the opinion that that victory on September the 18th should not be a victory for one section of the nation, you know, for one social class, for one region of the nation. Uh, it should uh, involve all of us. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, a considerable minority is going to vote no anyway. Um, but we are very anxious that the yes side should not present the appearance in these uh, three months of the coming campaign of being monolithic. Uh, of, of, of just spouting an orthodoxy. Now, we, uh, you know, we recognise, obviously, this referendum is essentially going to be won in the west of Scotland. I mean, that's where more than half the population lives, uh, and it has political interests of its own, and it's inevitable that the main, the main burden of the campaign is going to be fought over that ground. But that uh, makes it seem to us all the more important that all the other uh, strands in the nation should make their voices heard. I mean, Scotland, <coughs> for its small size, is an extremely diverse nation. Uh, as somebody said, it's a, it's a combination of Belgium and Norway, you know, derelict industrial land, and then uh, 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 people living in, uh, in bliss uh, uh, amid the mountains and uh, lots. Um, so our, our part in this is to remind everyone uh, that the uh, that Scottish independence is not is not simply a left wing cause. It's not it's not uh, something which uh, only uh, left wing people can support. And it's it is we hope it will bring results that do more than satisfy uh, merely the left wing in Scottish politics. We chose the uh, the name Wealthy Nation uh, first of all because. Uh, we wanted to join that part of the campaign uh, which counters the argument from the no side that Scotland is, you know, is too poor, too wee and too stupid to be an, to be an independent uh, country. Um, on the contrary, uh, the others will deal with all the figures, but I mean, I believe we're the, the 17th richest nation in the world. Um, we're certainly, uh, you know, we have, we have uh, five of the finest universities in the world, an incredible uh, uh, achievement for such a, a small country. Um, uh, and uh, we certainly have everything it takes to be an independent uh, nation if it is our will to do so. So that was the first reason we, we chose the, uh, the name Wealthy Nation. The, the, and the other big reason is, of course, it's a, it's a, a very clear allusion to uh, uh, Adam Smith, the founder of uh, the modern uh, science of economics, and his book published in uh, 1776, his great book called The Wealth of Nations, which investigated how nations become wealthy and, uh, and how they should deploy their wealth uh, once they've uh, achieved that. Now, in the last, let's say, since 1979, uh, Adam Smith has acquired a, a rather bad reputation, uh, not least in Scotland, as being uh, the architect of capitalism and all the evils uh, supposed to be attendant on that. But if you read Adam Smith, if you actually read the text, uh, Adam Smith is actually in favour of the ordinary man, of the ordinary person. Uh, one of the strongest lines that comes across in Adam Smith, he says that the merchants, by which he means business people, uh, are in a constant conspiracy to defraud the public and, uh, and enrich themselves at the public's expense. And he says the, argue, the, the answer to this, this inborn tendency, this ingrained tendency in the business community is to make the general people of the country as free as they possibly can be, to give them the rights which 
uh, enable them to resist the pressures of business. So that's the side, that's the side of Adam Smith that we want to emphasize uh, in our campaign, that Adam Smith is actually a man of the people and he defends the uh, people's rights. What we would say in the uh, present uh, situation that we uh, face in Scotland, we are absolutely sure that after independence, Scotland can become a country in which all its citizens are freer and happier people. Um, now, but we, I think we would probably disagree with certain <coughs> other sections of the independence movement uh, if we say that we shouldn't see the opportunities after, uh, after we become an independent country as be merely being uh, a, a, a process by which we share out the wealth that becomes available to us you know, under the North Sea or whatever it may be. Um, what we have to do is to look to the future uh, and to continue to generate and increase that wealth. Um, so the first thing we have to do, before we come to the share out, we should, uh, we should make sure that we have deployed our wealth in order to increase our growth rate, because Scotland has had, inside the United Kingdom, an underperforming economy with rather a poor growth rate. I mean, we're often compared, for example, or we like to compare ourselves with the Scandinavian countries and say we could be like that after independence. But the, the Scandinavian countries routinely achieve a growth rate every year of 4%. This year in Scotland, in, the, in a phase of strong recovery from recession, we're only going to, to uh, achieve a growth rate of 2.5%. So we have a long way to go before we, um, uh, before, before we attain the level of national income and national prosperity that allows us to have the kind of social services and social provision that the Scandinavian countries enjoy. So the main purpose of, uh, of Wealthy Nation, I would say that as, as it's emerged from our uh, campaigning so far, is that we have to convince the people of Scotland that that is the necessity we face, the first item on the agenda. Uh, we're also absolutely sure that this first item on the agenda can only be fulfilled if we have an independent country uh, with full powers over our own economic fit. Now, my remarks are just by way of uh, introduction. I have uh, colleagues here who are uh, extremely expert on the more detailed uh, aspects of what I've been saying. So, uh, I look forward to sharing the rest of the evening uh, uh, with you, and I hand over now to my colleague, who will be introduced by Catherine. Thank you.